In the Gospel reading today, our Lord tells us anyone who leaves brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, wife and children, lands, homes, everything else behind, will receive a hundred times as much and everlasting life as well. When you listen to that, it might be an easy temptation to think the only people who can go to heaven then are the monks and the nuns, the ones who leave everything behind. But that's not the case. The monks and the nuns obviously are asked to leave everything behind. But every one of us is simply called to do the, God, the will of God, whatever that may be. And God is going to make you a saint according to his will, according to your state in life, to whatever it is that he has called you to. And so the real key to this whole thing is just seeking God's will. We look at the first reading and we hear about Moses, which obviously they're applying to, to, to the religious in this way as well, but nonetheless, we look at it with regard to Moses. And we're told that God made him like a saint, raised him up and did all these things. But we have to remember that this also required something on Moses' part. Yes, it was the grace of God, but Moses had to say yes. Moses had to accept that grace. He had to cooperate with God. And that becomes critically important because, as I've told you many times, God is calling you to be a saint. He's not just calling monks and nuns to be saints. He's calling you to be a saint. And therefore, he's going to give you all the grace that you need to be able to become a saint. Now it's our turn. We have to cooperate. We have to open our hearts to receive his grace. The hard part of that is that we keep trying to do it our way. If we're going to say we want to do it God's way, we want to become saints by doing the will of God, then we have to learn to let go of our own will, which is the single most difficult thing in the spiritual life. If you go back even to look at what happened with Moses, remember that there is a principle that the higher one is in the spiritual life, the greater the sin will be and the more effect it's going to have. So Moses at this point, as he's leading the people through the desert, gets frustrated with them. They're whining and they're complaining as they did regularly, just like us. We whine and complain about everything. And Moses finally had enough. God said, just strike the rock and it's for my glory. Instead, Moses did it twice, and the water flowed out of the rock. And that cost him being able to enter into the promised land. And so we see that, and we realize that as holy as Moses was, that one act of doing his own will, of disobedience to the will of God, cost him entrance into the promised land. Now, part of that, again, is because he was so advanced in the spiritual life. A lot of us, if we would do that, we'd say, I guess it was showboating a little bit. I was showing off. I have whatever. My pride got in the way. But if you're very advanced in the spiritual life, it's going to have a lot of effect. And we look at that one point since we're talking about Moses in the first reading. And then we look at ourselves and say, how often do I do my own will rather than God's? Indeed, you can even ask it a little bit more clearly. How often do I even ask God what his will is? Do I want to do the will of God? Most of us, let's be honest, 
course I want to do the will of God when, it, when he wills what I want. <laughs> no problem then. Yeah, I'll do his will all day long as long as it's what I want anyway. So the question is, what's when, what about when his will is a little different than mine? When he's asking for something that I don't want or I don't want to do, am I willing to do it? Am I willing to put my own ideas and my own will aside and do the will of God? Because that's what the saints do. And God is asking for you and me to become saints. And so it's not just simply a matter of saying, okay, I'll leave everything. If you're called to be married, that would not be good. I'll just leave my spouse and my kids and my house and I'll just go off to the desert and I'll just pray all the time. Sounds like heaven. Unless you're called to be married. If God's asking you to go to the desert, then go. But if he's asking you to be married, then he's not going to ask you to go to the desert. So it's a matter of not simply saying, let me give up these external things, home and land and spouse and children and parents. It's a matter of giving up what is internal, my own will. That is difficult. As difficult as it would be to give up all the other things externally, far more difficult is to give up our own will. But if we're serious about striving to do the will of God, then that's what it has to be. It shouldn't be that difficult because remember, God only, only wills the very best. He doesn't ever want second best for you, only the very best. And if God wants only the best, then it should be so easy for me to do what God wants me to do. <laughs> Except my idea of what's best and his idea of what's best are sometimes very different. He, of course, is right and I'm wrong, but in my pride, I'm going to fight him. And I'm going to say, no, my will is, my way is better. My way is the best way. And we keep getting ourselves into hot water or at least winding up back in the confessional, because I did it my way. Frank Sinatra sang that. Satan sang it millions of years before Frank Sinatra ever did. It doesn't work. It winds everybody up in the same place. We need to do it God's way. That's what the saints teach us. And if we're going to be willing, to let go of everything. It doesn't just simply mean the externals. It means what is most important, letting go of our own will so that we can actually do what we pray every day when we say, thy will be done. Not my will be done, thy will be done. That's what our Lord taught us to pray. That's what we have to be striving to do, to put our own will aside and seek always the will of God.